Boom Shakalaka, what is going on everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love, and today's episode we are going to be talking about the three best and the three worst strategies for investing in cryptocurrencies. I was thinking the other day and I was like, hmm, there are some things that you can do to really help you gain a lot more Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, whatever it is. And then I was like, hmm, there are some other things you could do that could help you lose it all. So I figured I'd put those together into one video and name it the three best and three worst things you can do for crypto investing. Furthermore, if you think there are more after watching the video, definitely add them down in the comments. Before we get into things, guys, thank you so much for subscribing, liking the videos. Also, this video brought to you by the Monarch Wallet. Hold Bitcoin, 1900 other cryptocurrencies, also earn up to 10% interest per year. Also, now they have Monarch Pay, so you can um, pay for recurring payments with cryptocurrencies. Crazy awesome. So, I know I said the three best and three worst, but we're going to start with the three worst, because that way we'll work our way to the best. We can see what not to do, and then figure out what to do. So, beginning with number one for the three worst. The first one, if we take a look at the psychology of a market cycle, the first one will be buying at all-time highs. Basically, when something is very, very popular, when everybody's talking about it, when it's the craze of everything, buying then. That is the worst time to buy, because guess what? The price has nowhere to go but down. Now, this happened to a lot of people who got into Bitcoin in December 2017, January 2018, or beginning of 2018. And uh, now they're still just waiting for it to come back up because they bought it at all-time highs, even though people may have told them not to, or maybe people told them to buy. Who knows? But it's not only for Bitcoin because it's happening all the time. You see, like a couple months ago, there was a coordinated chain link pump, so it got listed on Coinbase, but also there was a huge 4chan effort to pump it. And as you can see, the price pretty much went from a dollar all the way up to four dollars. And that happened in about a month or two. And then people, a lot of people, because right when the price was way up here, all the way at all time highs, people were like, oh my God, Chainlink's the shit. It's going to so cool. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best thing forever. They're going to have these partnerships. Nah. And then the price just keeps coming down. Now, you're saying, but it's only down to $2. I mean, it could totally go up to like $8 or $10. I just want to give another example of another one that got pumped crazy, like 0x, because this is another thing. A decentralized exchange for Ethereum. Oh my God, this is going to be the most awesome thing ever. Yeah. And as you can see, once, once all the hype dies out, once people are like, why am I still holding this coin? What does it even do? The price goes down to nothing. So that is why you don't do number one. That is why you don't buy at all time highs. Now on to number two. The second one that you don't do is BitMEX and Bybit because these things are freaking dangerous gambling. You get liquidated and lose everything. Now a few of you out there are like, nah, but it's not gonna happen to me because I'm really good at time. Well, guess what? It happens to a lot of people. These exchanges make so much money because tons of people get liquidated every day. If you don't believe me, just search uh, and Google, Reddit, crypto, I lost everything. You can read this article about a guy who was doing pretty good. He he saved up everything he could, with, saved up a bunch of Bitcoin and Ethereum, and then he started leverage trading on BitMEX, okay? And at first, he was doing pretty good, but then he became addicted like a heroin addict, and he just kept on trading, and he lost everything, everything he saved up. He lost all of it, he got completely liquidated, and then... If you read towards the bottom, he was even commit, uh, contemplating suicide. Let's hope it didn't come to that, but this stuff is not for amateur traders. It's seriously only for professional traders. So that is number two going on BitMEX or Bybit. And there's a lot of YouTubers right now promoting Bybit because they get a shitload of money. They're making tons of Bitcoin. Like literally, they're making 10 to 20 Bitcoin uh, over the past couple months promoting Bybit. So a lot of people are using it, but it's dangerous, super duper dangerous. All right. Now, furthermore, that's number two. Number three, when are you going to stop sitting on that fence? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Yeah. Sitting on the fence. One of the most dangerous things you can do with Bitcoin is actually just sitting on the fence. Because guess what? If you take a look at where Bitcoin has been going, this is since 2010. As you can see, this is a logarithmic scale. Price just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. And if you just keep sitting on the fence, if you don't put any skin in the game, guess what? It's going to pass you. Now, sure, it's risky. It could all go to zero. You may lose your investment. You may lose your keys. But do you really want to be that person that's like, 
Yeah, I remember when it was $10,000. I thought it was too risky then. And then it's a million dollars. Do you really want to be that person? I don't know. There's only 21 million of them. And they're running out. There's only like 3.5 million left to mine. And guess what? Big corporations are buying up about 60% of that. Crazy. So those are the three worst things you can do. The three worst ways to invest in cryptocurrencies. But now that I've gotten you all bummed out, let's take a look at some of the best ways that you can invest in cryptocurrency. Alrighty? So, the first one. HODL. This has been a long time strategy. Uh, of the majority of the Bitcoin millionaires that I know, all of them have hodled. Okay, some of them invest, they speculated a little bit, but for the most part, they hodled. They held onto the Bitcoin for a long ass freaking time. Most of them for over three to four years. So guess what? If you bought Bitcoin in 2018 and you're not a millionaire yet, Hodl, give it some more time. It hasn't been three to four years, okay? When we come around 2021, 2022, then you can cry to me and then I'll, you know, give you a lend in the ear, all right? Now, in addition to hodling, uh, a second part of that strategy is dollar cost averaging. Now, dollar cost averaging is uh, investing a fixed dollar amount on a regular basis into Bitcoin. You can use it with other things as well, but we're just using Bitcoin for this thing. So I've been talking about this for a long time. And it turns out someone actually did a research study with Bitcoin to see when the best times are to dollar cost average. And they made this graph right here. And it turns out that the times in red are the best time to just buy a bulk amount, but the times in green are the best times to dollar cost average. So this is great. It's, I mean, it's great to look at it back previously, but uh, this guy does have some conclusions down at the bottom that I just wanted to share with you. So in closing, here's what he learned. So first off, most but not all of the time, you get better future returns if you just buy Bitcoin all at once rather than dollar cost averaging. So if you guys just want to plop a whole bunch in, I'm not going to stop you from doing that. You have a, a greater chance. I think it's like 60, 40 or something like that. You can read the article, but you have like a greater chance of just plopping your money in and doing better than dollar cost averaging. However, dollar cost averaging does not work better if you are buying during a bear market or if the price is already some way up a large vertical rise. Okay. So basically dollar cost averaging would have worked better from about the, I don't know, let's say November of 2017, all the way up until just recently, would have probably been the best strategy to use. And then furthermore, dollar cost averaging is psychologically easier. So if in doubt, dollar cost average and be happy. That's what I do. I just set up dollar cost averaging back in the beginning of 2017, and I just set it and forget it. Ron Popeil, Showtime, or it's history oven. It just every, every week takes out some money, buys some Bitcoin every single week. And I do it on Friday, not because I love the, Rebe the Rebecca Black song, but because statistically that's one of the better days to do it when Bitcoin is cheaper. Okay. So that's strategy number one. I know we're only at one. Number two, I talk about this one all the time too. MACD trading. It turns out it's really freaking awesome. You can 69 X your money over two years. And furthermore, I did just start doing some histogram trading. So trading on these bars instead of the MACD. However, my friend Biffy is doing some backtesting, and it looks like MACD trading is actually better than histogram trading. We'll have the full results for you coming up sometime soon. But, I mean, basically MACD trading is whenever the blue line crosses over the orange line or the orange line crosses over the blue line, you either go from Bitcoin to stablecoin or stablecoin to Bitcoin. And if you want to figure out how, if you want me to explain how to do all that stuff, just type in Crypto Love MACD. You can watch this video. I did a whole video on it. Also, I talk about it in this video cryptocurrency trading and investing strategy for 2019. And also, if you want to find out what I was talking about with the histogram strategy, you could take a look at this video I made six days ago, why I stopped MACD trading and what I do now. So that's strategy number two. And then lastly, the third strategy for how to the best, the good, the best, three best things for making more cryptocurrency investing. Educating yourself. That's number three. If you're going to invest in anything, no, don't invest in the latest trading bot. Don't invest in whatever BitMEX team. Don't invest in whatever. Invest in yourself, okay? And actually learn trading. Learn how to trade. Because once you learn how to trade, then you can actually make a lot of money. Most people don't learn how to trade. Uh, they just go ahead and it's more like gambling. They feel, ah, eh, you know what? I feel like this one could go up and they buy it. 
and then the price goes down. And it and it turns back to that first thing I talked about, buying at all time highs. Most people buy when there's a lot of, when they feel like they really should because everybody's talking about it, they're gonna miss out on the boat, oh my goodness, and then they buy. And then and this totally goes against everything that you learn from trading. So this is a book that I got my, from my friend Craig Simpson. Awesome book, Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques. Has a whole bunch of really great information. The Japanese have been doing this for a long time and they know way more than we do. So this is an awesome book, learn all types of stuff. You can go and read that book and uh, additionally, then you can start trading and you can start making money trading. Now in the beginning when you start trading, obviously you're going to lose some money. That's what happens, that's called an education, you have to pay for it. Stupid fucking universities charge you hundreds of thousands of dollars for their bullshit educations. So don't you think you could spend $25 on a book? Kind of makes sense. But if you want somewhere else to learn about trading, you could check out Signal Profits. They teach you how to trade. They teach you the, the beginning stuff. And then they also send daily trading signals where you could get between 7 and 27% on a regular. There is a link down in the description that is an affiliate link. And furthermore, I should have be having Crypto Face on the channel sometime soon, within a week or so. And uh, we'll be talking about trading and what you can do to trade because he's developed a pretty good system for trading. So we'll be talking about all that stuff, but trading is pretty exciting. So those are the three best strategies. So to sum it all up for you, again, in case you needed a reiteration, the three worst strategies, buying at all time highs, don't do that. BitMEX and BuyMit, just fucking set your money on fire. Sitting on the fence, you don't wanna let this pass you by. If you are literally watching my videos and you don't own any cryptocurrency, just smack yourself. Just for everybody's sake, just smack yourself right now because you're crazy. Okay. And then the three best strategies, HODL and dollar cost average, MACD trading, and learning how to trade, investing in yourself, and then actually trading cryptos. Because guess what? Oh, what I didn't mention with the HODL and dollar cost averaging, guess what? HODLing altcoins is a terrible strategy. Terrible strategy. I've shown it again and again. It's posted, it's pinned, it's a pinned message on the Telegram chat that I have. Altcoins go down when you hodl them. Bitcoin's the only one that goes up because guess what? Bitcoin has a fixed supply. Bitcoin's the main one that everybody knows about. So if you're gonna hodl, hodl Bitcoin. If you're gonna trade, trade altcoins or Bitcoin if you want, but you can trade altcoins. That's what they're there for. Now, that's it for the video today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed making it, putting that together for you. Um, also make sure, check out the Monarch wallet. It's a badass wallet. If you haven't taken a look at it, it's the best crypto wallet I have used to date. Okay, uh, super secure, it's been around for over a year, has a $100,000 hack bounty on it, no one's ever hacked it, and somebody holds over $700 million of crypto on it. So if that's not a big enough incentive, I don't know what is, pretty damn secure. Plus, guess what? You can put your money in there and earn up to 10% annual interest on your cryptos. So if you're just hodling cryptos, might as well hodl them on there. And thanks to Celsius Network, you can earn a pretty decent amount. And also, now they have Monarch Pay. All your recurring payments, you can pay with crypto if you want to. If you don't want to hodl it, you can pay with it. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you later. Subscribe if you like the video. Comment. Tell me what you think. If you have any other strategies I missed out on, definitely let me know. And I'll catch you guys later. Love you. Peace.